What highly recommended thing did you find disappointing? Life thanks for the gold kind stranger. Somebody recommended this to you? That's cruel. Yep. Don't listen to the people in the afterlife. Harold told me to give life another try, that my previous life was just a bad generated one. Life is a lot like pee wee baseball or soccer. Our parents signed us up thinking it would be a good idea, and now everyone is just disappointed, upset, and one hair away from throwing hands. Beer I'm ready to get downvoted I really hate the taste. Everybody hates it at first. It's an acquired taste that's acquired by forcing down a case of Milwaukee's best ice every weekend until you like it. I've had a lot of beer in my life, but Milwaukee's best ice is without a doubt the worst tasting beer I have ever had. It's definitely up there on the worst list. Also was my first beer ever which is why I chose to use it. Raw cookie dough dessert restaurants. It tastes nowhere near as good as the real thing when it's made to be safely edible. It's the thrill of the chance to get ill that makes cookie dough so good. So you're saying I can add risk taker to my dating profile? I've heard this my whole life. I honestly have never met or ever heard anyone mention someone they know getting ill from eating raw cookie dough. Yeah, I went to do in New York City and was pretty underwhelmed. I liked it, but it's just so sweet. They have do location at City Field, and it was almost impossible to eat in one sitting. It was the size of like a small cup of ice cream, but took me like an hour to eat, because the amount of sugar would make my teeth hurt. Had to buy a water, just to be able to finish it. Seeing the Mona Lisa in the Louvre, it's so much smaller than I'd imagined. Also the room is so busy, just a bit underwhelming really. My brother said the same thing. He was surprised to find other paintings there that he felt were much more beautiful with no crowd around to look at them. There are some obnoxiously good paintings there, like making something so good that it's practically a picture and stays that way for hundreds of years is incredible. And the level of detail the artists would put into even the side stuff people don't pay attention to was incredible. There's far greater art in every other wall of the Louvre. Including at least two of the walls in that very same room. A lot of music suggested by people I know. Right there with you. I like metal, and when people who listen to bluegrass or anything like that try to suggest something they think you'll like it's always absolute garbage. I feel like a part of becoming a more mature person is understanding that views and preferences that are different to your own are just as valid. Music is incredibly subjective, and there is actually no definitive objective measure of what is good and what I isn't. Everyone has their own favorites. One person might love a certain style of rap hip hop, and a metalhead might claim it to be bad music and vice versa, but really it's just bad only according to that specific person likes. I'm convinced that, no matter how well versed a person is in the breadth of musical diversity, that they are more authoritative in deciding what is better music. The Witcher 3. I simply could not get into the game, no matter how much I tried, and it looked so good as well. The thing is though, I have no real complaints about it. This is how I feel about Red Dead Redemption 2. Just couldn't get into it. This is me with so many highly acclaimed series. I understand why people like them, they are not bad games and I even like similar games. Just couldn't get into certain ones. The Bioshock series for example, I just couldn't be bothered to keep going a couple hours into the first two titles. There's just too much stuff to do, and most of said stuff is boring or redundant. Following a trail, and killing a monster gets kind of boring after a while. Getting a house with a close friend, it went sour quickly, ironically moving in with someone a Borelli knew, has been the best, and we're great mates now. That's really interesting actually. Maybe it had something to do with expecting certain behavior from your friend, and being let down versus not knowing what to expect from the new guy, and being pleasantly surprised. The best college roommate is one you have never met before. They usually respect your space a bit more than someone you know well. Lived with four of my buddies and they routinely found it okay to use my stuff constantly without asking. Most strangers don't do that, because it is socially unacceptable. My best friend was a better housewife than my wife. He was unemployed when he moved in, so I was a bit worried, except when I got home from work the house was spotless and dinner would be ready. 
we drank beer, and played video games most of the time, and never had any disputes. It was awesome. Driving. I don't like to drive. I wish I lived in a smaller country, where I didn't have to drive to get to places. I live downtown in a city with amazing public transport and cheap, well-maintained share bikes. It'll probably never buy another car. It's fabulous. Driving is my therapy. Going down the road with my thoughts is amazing. Thong bikinis. BMW motorcycles. The movie Pulp Fiction. What's wrong with BMW motorcycles? Based on his other two answers, probably nothing at all. It's not a motorcycle baby, it's a chopper. I think Pulp Fiction is the only good Tarantino movie, and hated the rest, lol. You didn't like the one with the bear Jew? Not a fan of Tarantino's style in general, but I found plenty to like about Pulp Fiction. Marvel movies. It just seems like a highly formulated franchise. Also, I don't really like superheroes. My friend treats me like I just kicked a puppy when I explain this. I've definitely had superhero fatigue this past year. I couldn't get myself to care about any of the movies. Ant-Man is pretty fun, but I'm with you, especially the Avengers movies, I'm not into those at all. I like the MCU, but I agree with you, it is designed to be formulaic. It's okay not to like popular things. Some fans don't respect that unfortunately. I think a big problem is that these pop culture fandoms become an identity, so disliking one's pop culture tastes is perceived as a personal attack when it shouldn't be. The Hunger Games, granted I never read the books and knew nothing about them until the movies blew up, but after watching the first movie in theaters I just felt a sense of boredom and waning interest through the duration of it, and it had such a cliche ending too, 10, would not recommend. I actually enjoyed the book, at least the first two, a lot. Granted, I was a preteen when the first one was popular, but it has some pretty great world building at the very least, and the movies did a surprising job with that. The concept of the games was fun. Would enjoy the series, if it was a TV show where every week we saw a new Hunger Games. I wonder what you would think of the actual ending to the series. Fortnite it was last year, when Fortnite was fairly popular. Still didn't enjoy it. Everyone in my school plays Fortboat, and says it is the best game ever I played it once, and it was very boring, and I didn't get it. Even played with my friends, nope. Very boring game. Rocket League. I know it's a good game, I just couldn't get into it. It has a really high skill cap. It's definitely a lot more fun once you have decent control in the air. Chipital. Feels like every millennial loves them. I tried their burrito once, and got a bad stomachache after. Also, their cilantro doesn't taste like anything which is weird. I'm Mexican and I've tried many burritos, and chipotle is just, not that great. When we white millennials say we love chipotle, what we are comparing it to is the Mexican food we grew up with ground beef with taco seasoning, and a can of salsa from the ethnic section at Target. Right. The standard for comparison is Taco Bell in a town 100 miles away from the nearest Latino family, not top tier taco truck in cosmopolitan city near the Mexican border. I used to get stomachaches every time I got Chipotle, but their guac is probably the better mass produced guac I've gotten, so I kept trying to figure out what it was. Didn't get meat one day, and I was fine I agree with most everything else you've put there though. For me avocado, I do not understand the appeal in discolored mush water. Why would you add water when preparing an avocado? Whoever did this to you is a monster. Everyone knows the best avocados are so ripe you can poke a hole and then squeeze out the juice like as it. I suddenly don't like avocado anymore. I'm not the op, but avocados taste like greasy slimy water fat to me. I'm a picky eater and some foods are about taste, some are about texture, and avocados are both. I know I'm weird, so I just pick gross ingredients out of my meal most of the time. If the word water is at all involved in your description, you're definitely eating the wrong avocados and you shouldn't judge the fruit as a whole on whatever specimen you happen to come across that were watery. Going to college. 
I was one of the best students in my high school, so it was no brainer that I would go here. But when I've come to college I've lost all my steam, especially when I've picked the one which emphasize on things that in my high school were neglected. What was your major? College can be really rough if you're in a major that doesn't sweet you. I tried to do pre-nursing halfway through college and had a semester full of science classes. Failed three, five classes that semester and frankly stopped going to those three classes at some point in November knowing there was no way I could pass. I got put on academic probation for it. I changed my major the following semester and still retook two of those classes to get rid of the Fs on my transcripts. That was fun point this is all to say, you're absolutely correct. People go into college not knowing if it's really necessary because they don't even know what they want to do. We need to give more support and credence to gap years in the US, Imo. I know I know, nobody agrees with me, but there's actually not one can I song that I'm in love with. Not a fan of his music and definitely not a fan of his lunacy. Whale watching by boat. I thought it would be so cool, but I ended up feeling like we were harassing a poor creature just trying to go through its day. This was in Victoria, BC a few years back, and the whales were not where the boat operators expected them to be I guess, so suddenly they were radioing other tour companies all trying to figure out where the whales were, zooming around chasing after possible sightings. My company did a whale watching tour as a kind of team event. I decided not to go, because I don't really like being on the water I get seasick. It went beyond normal work hours, and I would have had to fight rush hour traffic to get back from there to home when it was over, all just to see some whales. No thanks. The next day people were talking about how they didn't see a single whale on the tour. Thinking there is a guarantee that you'll see a whale is pretty ridiculous. The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I really wanted a fantasy book that had never been adapted for film TV, and it came super highly recommended. It's quite a cool world, but it's hundreds of pages of not much happening to a super unlikable protagonist. I couldn't get past an agrarian society not knowing how babies happen. You breed goats FFS you know about reproduction. Rothfuss is a writer I like for his writing, not his plot or characters. I definitely understand not liking those books. I would say they are recommended because of the prose which is a rarity. You're better off. This and the Song of Ice and Fire series I have given up all hope of ever being finished. After like 4 or 5 recommendations from a very close friend to different restaurants it became obvious we have different tastes. Don't listen anymore. Dear Evan Hansen. There was nothing appealing to me about it at all. It mostly just made me irritable by reinforcing every possible stereotype about suicide mental illness everything ever. Did not enjoy. American Horror Story. A few friends used to rave about it, but I found it really weak when I watched some cheesy acting. Production values seem sucky too. I remember giving the first season a try and I couldn't stand how the camera just can't stay still for a second. I always hear about how the other seasons are better but yeah, it's hard to overcome the bad taste the first season left for me. Blowjobs, I just kept gagging. I don't like when you gag either. But gagging is part of the fun. Visting San Francisco, I actually prefer Los Angeles Malibu area. My experience with San Francisco is homeless people and a few interesting sights and homeless people. It was sad. I've lived in both, and I've found that LA is preferable in many ways. What are the main differences to you? San Francisco is covered in 75% more fesses than LA. Scrabble, it's basically the home version of going to school, plus it only outlines how dumb I am. That's why my wife hates Jeopardy. Boba tea. The drink itself is nice, but the boba itself is too chewy for me, and I don't like it. Red Dead Redemption 2 IDK why it just wasn't fun. New Orleans. Food's great. Found the drinking culture painful. Most popular burger joints like Five Guys or Shake Shack. I haven't been to an out yet but I suspect that I'm not going to be impressed by them either. Everyone always hypes up these burger franchises, and while I immensely enjoy the fries and shakes, the burgers always disappoint me, they try too hard. The last few times my mom wanted a fast food burger, I picked McDonald's lol. 
5 guys is much better than in and out, so I wouldn't waste your time if you already don't like 5 guys. Books that were highly recommended to me. Whenever I finally came around to picking them up, I had piled up too high expectations and I didn't end up enjoying them. I had this with so many popular books that some of the most popular ones I couldn't even finish. Some examples are Throne of Glass and Daughter of Smoke and Bone. The first one just wasn't for me happens to the best of us, but the second one I hate with a passion. Throne of Glass, as in the one by Sarah J Maas, the author who constantly brags about how she writes a book in one day and refuses to any of her manuscripts. Yeah, you're lucky you didn't like that book. After the third book in the series, she stopped outlining the story and the whole concept totally derailed. Her writing is a good example of how to not write a book. She puts no effort into any of her novels at all, and she is well known in the publishing industry as being a nightmare to work with, because she takes any constructive criticism as a personal attack, threatens to leave her publishing house for asking her to her first drafts, and publicly trashes other authors who write in her genre. Her books are not worth reading. Silver Linings Playbook I watched it late, and went in, after having seen a month's worth of critics and fans absolutely slobbering over how fantastic it was, only to be met with a two hour long cry fest where Jlora and Bradley Cooper tried to outact each other in a bid for that year's Oscar. I cringed all the way through, it's a boring movie that was overs old. Sherlock and Firefly, they were both fine, but I was expecting a life changing watch. I think Firefly and Sherlock had their place in the history of media, at the time they were breakthrough, but now that other shows have done part of what made them acclaim worthy, it lessens the overall enjoyment. I still think Firefly is great for the sake of being a simple concept, well executed and written for its time. Also the movie did a decent job of at least trying to wrap up some story in the follow up comics, were decent at continuing the story, if you cared to go that far. But I wouldn't ever want to see a continuation of the OG series like some claim or want. A lot of what makes Firefly great is that it ended at a point where it had created enough questions for several seasons worth of material, but never got around to answering them. We never got to the episodes that would deliver disappointing or underwhelming answers, so the best episodes are the ones we've never seen, but dreamed up the answers to in our heads. You've also got a really impressive cast. Nathan Fillion, Alan Tudyk, Mark Shepard, Gina Tours, Marina Baccarin, Christina Hendricks and more. A whole lot of people from that show have done some pretty impressive work in 16 years since Firefly was on air.